Howdy YouTube, Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse. And today we're going to cover the Plex Media Server and how I use it uh, in my home, in my business environment to uh, serve out media to the rest of the house. Um, I'm also going to cover the uh, devices I use uh, to connect up to Plex and some of the pitfalls uh, and some of the setup information. This is not a tutorial on Plex per se. It's more of a general guide as to how I use it in my environment. And so your setup uh, may, may differ. Uh, if you're looking for a Plex setup video, there's just do a search on YouTube. There's a ton of those videos out there. And uh, I, I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole today. I'm just going to basically talk about how I use it uh, and what devices I use with it. I'm also going to cover the Plex DVR, which is in beta right now. Uh, yes, Plex can record uh, TV and serve it up to you, as well as your movies and your music and photos and that type of thing. Uh, and I'm also going to share with you some of my tips and tricks I use to optimize my videos, how I rip my videos, what programs I use to do that, uh, etc. Uh, then we'll do an unboxing of the... Uh, of the HD Home Run Connect, which is what you need to do uh, live TV on Plex with, or recorded TV on Plex with. Uh, so we'll do that unboxing, and then uh, we'll uh, we'll wrap up uh, the video with uh, my future plans and and some of the shortcomings of Plex and and what I'm uh, what I'm envisioning moving forward to serve my home TV and media needs. So. Let's get this video started. All right, so I use Plex to serve up movies, TV, videos, home videos, pictures, and music. Um, and that's generally what I use Plex for. Right now we have DirecTV uh, and uh, we have three, four receivers. We have the main receiver and three of the uh, DirecTV genies, I guess they call them. They're the wireless uh, boxes that connect to your individual TVs. Um, the only reason we have Direct TV is because uh, my 78-year-old mother lives with us, and and she doesn't understand Netflix and and Plex and all these other things. And she's used to having a guide and selecting a show and watching it in the real in real time. And she kind of plans her schedule around that. But there's only you know really four or five programs that she watches on a regular basis and all of these programs are available over the air uh, from our local television stations uh, for free. Well they're not free, you have to put up an antenna and you have to have a, a receiver, that kind of thing. But you get my gist. Um, we're paying over $150 a month for Direct TV and that's, you know what a tight wad I am, that's quite a bit of my, that's over $1,700 a year for television. and. Um, now that Sling TV is out there, we can get a lot of these channels a la carte. Um, so moving forward, what I'm trying to do is get a system together that will not only allow me to access Plex, but will access, allow me to access Netflix and Hulu and Amazon and all of the online video services, and also allow me to do live TV and recorded TV. And uh, what I use uh, on my remote TVs uh, is a combination of uh, uh, Roku 3s. I have a Roku 3 in the bedroom and a Roku 3 in the living room. And then uh, I also use Xbox 360s that I grabbed off of eBay for a pretty cheap price because we like to game. And uh, so I have one of those in the living room and one of them here in my studio or my office. So that's what I use to stream video uh, from Plex and YouTube and and Netflix, etc. And right now, the only thing lacking on that is uh, live TV on the Plex. Uh, but recently, Plex has come up with their DVR uh, function that's in beta. We're going to go over that in this video as well. Now, I always keep my remote devices, my Roku's and my Xboxes, on a wired connection. I do not use wireless. Uh, I don't even try to stream high def video over wireless anymore. It's just it's more trouble than it's worth. Um, and even though I have an excellent uh, Ubiquity 
wireless access point. Um, it just, uh, I have a lot of trouble streaming high def video over wireless. Uh, it's, it's odd because we had a party last Saturday. We had about 20 people all on their wireless devices connected up to my wireless network and it never hiccuped. But anytime you try to stream high def video uh, from the Plex to the Roku's or Plex to the Xbox, it just kind of chokes. All right, so I'm going to show you the uh, machine I have Plex actually installed on. You can, again, it's not a tutorial download you can download and install Plex but you need what you need to keep in mind is Plex uh, on lower end units like Roku 2's and below Xbox 360's PS 3's if you're going to use those as your playback devices uh, for whatever reason Plex decides it needs to transcode videos being streamed to those devices uh, even 480p videos um, so you need to have a pretty powerful processor to do transcoding uh, for for your Plex server if you're going to use those devices. Now if you're using the uh, Roku 3 and higher, if you're using a computer, if you're using a uh, uh, Xbox One or PS4, uh, you probably will be able to get by with direct play in there and then you don't need such a quite as powerful processor. But go to the Plex website and they can tell you exactly what processor they'd recommend based on how many streams you plan on transcoding at any one time. Uh, let me switch over to my monitor here. This is my Dell R710 server and you can see it's got two sockets, eight cores, and 16 logical processors. And uh, even though I have a bunch of virtual machines running on this machine, my CPU utilization stays about one, between one and five percent. And so this is the unit I decided to load Plex on and I've got it down here and running. And you'll see as we move on through these uh, videos that uh, uh, I'll show you an example of where Plex starts to actually utilize the processor power on this server uh, that I've got it on. Now, uh, the way I have my folders set up for Plex is, uh, <coughs> is very simple. Let me bring that up here. Uh, so I simply have a share on my SAN called Video. And then I organize by genre like action adventure, etc., etc. And you can see all of them under there. And then if I go under action adventure, you can see all my action adventure folders, and then uh, correspondingly the the movies, the MP4 files under there. And uh, so that's how I've got my uh, videos organized. Now I also have another share called Tech Vids, and in there I have uh, some training videos and sometimes I want uh, these videos available to Plex as well. So and that's one of the nice things about Plex is that you can you can have your videos uh, actually stored in, in multiple share locations and uh, you can point Plex to that share location and, and it figures out uh, what you need to do. So that's the server setup I have. Again, go to the Plex website, uh, calculate how many streams you might need to transcode at one time and they have a complete FAQ on there uh, or even a wiki on there and check it out and it'll tell you how to check your processor to make sure it can handle multiple streams because I find most people have trouble with Plex is because their CPU is underpowered or the machine they're running it on is underpowered. Alright so what I'd like to cover now is the uh, actual Plex interface uh, so I'm going to switch over to that uh, in Chrome. I've got uh, Plex up and running here, and that'll bring me up to the uh, to the Plex screen. Now, what I want to show you again, uh, this is not a tutorial for Plex. This is just how I have my Plex set up. And you saw earlier when I showed you uh, my folder structure under Plex uh, on my server. Let me go back to that real quick and you can see how I've got all my folders set up. So I'm going to show you how to add, uh, for example, I have a couple of folders I need to add to my Plex media server. That's the family, the movies under the family folder, and the movies under the horror folder. So let's go back to Plex and uh, see how we add those items to the Plex media server. So if I come over here to Plex on the far left hand side you'll see my libraries here and I have a plus sign I just click on the plus sign 
I tell it whether, whether I'm adding movies, TV shows, music, photos, or home videos, and it is indeed movies. And these are family movies, so I'm going to go ahead and type in family, and click on next. And then I'm going to browse for that media folder. Now, if you remember, my videos are under the V drive, so if I click under V, and then I select the family folder. So what I do is I select the root of the family folder, which is V, column backslash family, and I click on add. And then I click on add library. Now, if you had family videos on, say you had multiple NAS or SAN devices, or you've got, you've got your, your videos shared across the network on multiple devices, you could actually add another folder here as well. You can add multiple folders uh, that Plex will go out and read. So it doesn't have to be located on just one storage device. You can have multiple storage devices and add it. But for our purposes, I've only got the uh, on the V drive. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Add Library. And now Plex will go out and it's going to find all of the movies out in that folder. And it's going to go out and get the uh, information from the internet databases uh, and populate uh, these, uh, these little uh, uh, thumbnails here. So I'm going to go I'm going to go back home to Plex and I'm going to go ahead and add another folder I need to add which is my horror movies. So I'm going to go movies and then I'm going to tell it horror. Click on next. The same as we did with the family we need to browse to the V drive and choose the horror folder and click on add and then add library. Okay so while Plex is adding that information in there um, this is how I organize my folders. Uh, Plex gives you detailed information on their website as to how you need to name your files and your folders and your extensions and whatnot. So I would suggest you go to the Plex website and follow that guide. Uh, we will come back once uh, these uh, libraries have been populated and I'll show you uh, some further information on it. So now Plex has finished uh, populating my images for the family folder that I have on Plex. And one of the nice things about Plex is all of this is pretty much customizable. So uh, let me give you an example of that. Uh, chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Say that I don't like that poster. If I click on the pen here on Plex under that and come down here to poster, I can choose a different poster for that movie, and uh, this is the one I uh, this is the one I like right here. So I'll just click on that, and then save changes, and you'll see Plex will go out and immediately update that that cover or the poster for that video. Same way with Mary Poppins. I don't like this poster. I want to choose a different one uh, right here. That's the one I have. I like to keep these corresponding to the actual. DVD or Blu-ray cover that I have uh, for that video. So let's just go through and uh, from here I could just, if I click on the Grinch, it brings it up uh, and gives me all the information about the director, writer, cast, etc. I can uh, play the video. If I come over here to the left, I can play the trailer. I can edit and you'll remember that from the main page. It's the same little pen mark. So uh, I can change the title, the sort title, the date it was available, etc. Uh, and even the summary, I can put my own tags on it if I wanted to. And the big one here uh, is not info. Forget what I just said, cancel. I come down here, I can add it to a playlist, I can refresh it, I can mark it as watched. And if I click these three little dots over here, uh, I can play it next, I can add it to a queue, I can fix incorrect match. Occasionally this will come up and it'll match the video incorrectly. Maybe it would have found the, the Grinch cartoon version. Uh, if it had, I could just go here and then tell it, hey, I want you to search for a different uh, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. It'll go out to the internet and find a better match. Uh, for example, uh, here we go. So say that this was the animated version. There it would be right there. So I could select it there and then... Uh, Plex would correct that, but I'm going to I'm gonna cancel on that. Um, let's see what happens when I go to info here. This is also a very powerful little button, the info button. And you can bring it up from here in Plex. You can bring up info. Or if you're at the main screen here for the family videos, you just come over to the three little dots 
and go to info. So what this will tell you is what what the re resolution is, the bit rate, the duration, aspect ratio, if there is more than one part, etc. Tell you the codec that was used, uh, and and especially this most important part here, the size, 1.38 gig. Maybe I have it under drama. Drama, 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 drama. There it is, the stand. Now, some videos are multi-part or multi-disc, like the stand is a dual dual-sided DVD. So, I had to rip. Uh, when I ripped the stand, I had to rip each side and put it into separate uh, folders. So, let me bring up the. Uh, let me bring up my uh, my left monitor here, and go to that folder under drama, and let's go down to the stand. So under the stand, I have two different videos. There's side one and side two, or part one and part two. And that's how I labeled them. So if I come back to uh, Plex now, you'll see that if I go into the stand and... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm on the wrong screen. If I go into the stand, click on the three dots, and go down to Info, you can see how it handles multi-part videos. Okay? Uh, right here. So part one is the stand part one it's 1.11 gig part two is the stand part two mp4 so plex knows when you have multi-part videos uh, and it keeps track of those files for you as well for example i have two versions of the thing i have the version from 1982 and the version from 2011 uh, so if i were to click on this version you can see it's a 1080p version in high def uh, it has uh, extras down here that you can play. Now let's talk about how I get those extras. Uh, I'm a member of what they call the Plex Pass. I think it runs about four bucks a month. Uh, it allows you access to their beta software and you get some of the whiz bang features that Plex offers like, like these extras under your videos. All right, so I've spent a lot of time over the years uh, trying to find the best way to get my media onto uh, Plex and uh, previously I used to use a program called My Movies by Binnerup Consulting on my Windows Media Center PC and it had a very nice interface like Plex and kept all your movies uh, you know uh, indexed and, and all the information you could even check out videos to friends and family and and it would keep track of who had what but anyway now that we're on Plex I have to do my videos a little bit differently. And let me tell you how I treat videos in my house. Um, my spouse is an avid collector of DVDs and Blu-rays. If we like a movie, we go out and we buy the DVD or the Blu-ray. Now, typically when we buy a movie, we buy the combo. For example, the Star Trek Beyond. We bought a Blu-ray plus DVD plus digital copy. And there's a reason I do that. <clears throat> because... I typically don't rip Blu-rays uh, because they're so large. Uh, they're, they're just too damn big. And even though I have three terabytes of space on my NAS, I don't want to eat it up with a bunch of Blu-rays. DVD rips are good enough for me on my 50-inch and smaller TVs around the house. Uh, I don't mind 480p video at all. It doesn't bother me a bit it, because usually I watch it when I'm going to bed or if I'm not feeling well or if I just want to chill and relax and watch a movie. The reason we get the DVD plus the Blu-ray is because in the theater room we have a Blu-ray player and in the living room we have a Blu-ray player. And occasionally we like to watch uh, a movie, the Blu-ray version of the movie, uh, but we wanted to watch it on a big screen where the detail is not wasted on a you know a smaller screen. Uh, so that's how we do it. So what I'm going to show you next is is the program I use to rip my DVDs and my Blu-rays, and uh, I'll give you give you a little uh, how-to on that. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail uh, on it, but I will just show you how I do it, uh, and then uh, you can. Uh, you could figure out if that's a good way to do it for yourself or not. And one more thing I want to talk about with Plex. We have probably five to 600 DVDs in our collection. And maybe now we have 50 or 60 Blu-rays. And don't think for a minute that I have ripped every single one of those DVDs to my media server. Um, <clears throat> we have some movies that we watch all the time. 
uh, Lord of the Rings, uh, Harry Potter, uh, you know, action adventure movies, and we like having them at our fingertips so we can watch them whenever we want to. And then what I do is about every three to six months, I'll go through and movies that we haven't watched or, or we aren't watching and don't plan to watch again for a while, I'll remove them from my NAS and uh, or just archive them somewhere and then add new movies to the Plex as I see fit as we want them. So again, I don't have enough storage by any means to store every single one of my DVDs that was ripped. Uh, so uh, some movies, like I say, we just don't watch on a regular basis and it's easier to just pop them in a DVD player if we want to watch a movie one night. So, so what I use is a program called Make MKV. And let's uh, switch over to that right now so you can see, how, see it right here. You can get this program free. Uh, it's always in beta. It has been for years. And uh, that's fine. Uh, and right now I have the start, it, but I would recommend you pay for it. And that way you, because every 30 days you have to reload the software. So uh, send, send the folks at MKV some money because it'll break the encryption on your DVD and your Blu-rays. And they keep it updated and you don't have any third-party software to buy and it works really well. So I'm I'm going to show you how I do this. I've got the I've got this DVD in the or Blu-ray. I'm sorry, in the drive right now, and basically all I have to do is click here, and it'll go out and it'll read uh, the Blu-ray. Hopefully, yeah, there it goes, and it tells you the functionality of share. Where do you want to start the evaluation period? And it restarts the evaluation period every time you run it. But after 30 days, uh, it will make you download a new version or, or it'll want you to pay, which is fine. I, I don't mind paying for really good software. So we'll let this run and I'll show you what, what it comes up with at the end. Now, you're going to see a lot of files and folders here. If you, wanna, if you want a tutorial video on Make MKV, uh, go look them up on YouTube. There's a ton of them out there. I'm not going to go over them. But basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to right click and I'm going to unselect all. And then what I typically do is I go to the one with uh, the largest size on the titles here. <clears throat> and uh, typically I rip everything. And what this is going to do is it's going to rip it to an MKV file. And here's the kicker right here. Look at that. 32.3 gigabytes for one Blu-ray. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and tell it to make an MKV. It's going to ask me to create the directory, and we'll let this run. Alrighty, so let's. Uh, it looks like MKV has uh, completed ripping the Blu-ray, and so I'm going to go ahead and click on OK here. I'm going to close Make MKV, and then I'm going to bring up the folder where it put the video and you can see it's 24 gigabytes in size and that's a very very large file and uh, let me do something here I'm gonna load I'm gonna mute the sound and I'm playing it with VLC media player and I just want to play a few segments of it so you can see it's got really good picture quality no hesitation I can fast forward on the video everything I need to do and I've got a beautiful copy of this video now, of this Blu-ray. So instead of using Handbrake now to uh, compress my videos, uh, I, I just find it easier to use Plex. And Plex is a really, really good way to uh, compress and shrink your video size. And I'm about to show that to you right now. Um, ripping a DVD takes anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes and the file size is anywhere between four and six gigabytes and it's going to take a lot of those files to fill up my NAS so like I said that's typically the what I rip sometimes though the, I can't get the movie in the DVD copy they only come in blu-ray and on that occasion I go ahead and I rip it with make MKV like I showed you and I get a between a what a 15 and 40 gigabyte size file uh, but like I showed you with Handbrake, it would take three to four hours to compress that video. I don't have that kind of time. So what I do instead is I use a feature within Plex that not a lot of people know about, but it's a really, really handy feature. Uh, let me show that to you right now. Let me switch over to Chrome here. 
Um, and so I've got my horror selection up here, and I uh, let's just pick the thing as an example. <clears throat> now, you're probably asking yourself, well, why do you want to reduce that file size? Why do you want to get a smaller size? Well, here's why. Uh, a 1080p video plays fine on my Roku 3, but it does not play well at all on my Xbox 360, uh, especially if I have subtitles ena enabled. Uh, it has a problem playing uh, the video. It will stutter, it will get blocky, it will break up, and then it will just... Plex will eventually give up trying to play it. So there's a, there's a feature, a really neat feature in Plex called Optimize. And what Optimize does is it allows you to tell Plex to make another copy of that video without disturbing the original and use that specifically for uh, a specific bandwidth. So let me show you how that works. I've, I've opened the thing here, and, and it's, it's in high def, as you can see. If I come over here to these little three dots, I have an option called Optimize. And you have some choices here. Typically, I use Optimize for mobile. That creates a 720p by 4 megabit per second video, <coughs> excuse me, which is <coughs> more than enough. Uh, it's pleasing to the eye, and it'll play on your mobile devices. It'll play on your phone. It'll play on your tablet. And best of all, it will play on the Xbox 360. You do have some other options. You can optimize it for TV. You can keep the original quality, or you can even go to custom, and you can tell it, you know, for Android, iOS, Universal, Windows Phone, Windows, Xbox One, and you can even select your uh, your uh, speed here uh, on for the uh, the compression. But for our for this video, I'm just going to show you how I do it optimized for mobile. Now, what it's going to do, it's going to convert your media to this quality. Each version will be stored in a separate file. And then it asks you where you, where you want to store it. So you can store it in the folder with the original items, or you can create another one in, uh, in horror. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to keep it in folder with original items. And now all I have to do is tell it optimize. Okay? So now it tells me my media is being converted. Watch the status of the conversion here. So if I click here, you can see that it is going to take the thing and it's going to convert it to optimize for mobile and it's going to do it in about 62 minutes. Now that's a hell of a lot better than the three hours it was going to take to convert that video uh, with Handbrake. So you can see why I've just now kind of given up on Handbrake. Uh, to do my uh, video compression. I just allow Plex to go ahead and optimize it. And Plex does a really good job of it and uh, once it's done optimizing the video we'll come back and we'll look at the uh, we'll look at the other version of it and see how good the picture quality is. Uh, so let me uh, switch over to uh, my, uh, my server that that is running on and now you can see I'm actually getting some work done on this. This is my Dell server where Plex is located, and that's where the optimization is going to occur is on this machine. So it's actually now utilizing 8, 9, probably 10 of those 16 logical cores I have to compress and optimize the video. Now, while Plex is optimizing the video, if no other video is being played on Plex, it will give the priority to the optimization of the video. And Plex is intelligent enough to know that when you are viewing or streaming a video to your Roku or your Xbox, it will then give priority to the streaming or the transcoding. So uh, typically when I go to optimize a video, it takes about an hour to optimize a high def video to 720p, unless I'm streaming something across on Plex then it takes a bit longer. It could double or triple the time, depending on the video you're streaming and whether it's transcoding or not. But I think you'll agree this is probably a better way to compress your videos than to use Handbrake uh, at this point. Now, if you're still a fan of Handbrake and you get really good encodes with low, in low encoding time, then great, use it. But this is what I do to, to compress my Blu-rays when I can't get a, a DVD and a Blu-ray copy. Your mileage might vary. So we've, uh, we have the uh, video optimizing uh, the, uh, let's see, the, the, the thing, and it's still uh, converting. And it's running a little bit slower than I had planned on it running because Plex is doing some other things in the background. So we'll let that finish. But let me show you uh, 
uh, let me go to uh, let's go to action adventure and I have some optimized videos on there for example let's look at men in black anywhere you see the number two means there's two versions of that video two or more versions of that video so if I click on men in black um, I have an option here let me see if I can find it um, say for example I want to play the if I just click on men in black and tell to start playing let's resume from where I was I believe this is the 1080p version that it's playing no I'm wrong let me come back. Uh, let's start this over. So come to the come to these three buttons here, and you have an option here to play version. So I could either play the 1080p version, or I could play the 720p 4 megabit per second version. Uh, so that's once you've optimized your videos, you'll have an option on your Roku and on your Xbox to play the version that corresponds. So. Let's see if I can play the 1080p version. I'm going to start it from the beginning. And we're not going to play very much of this because I do not want to get a copyright infringement. So there's the opening titles. Let's fast forward a bit. So this is, uh, some, yeah, this is the 1080p version. And right now I've got it set to play at 8 megabits 1080p. Uh, I'm going to set it to original. Uh, and just show you how the web interface handles it. Um, we'll go ahead and uh, jump forward here and got another beautiful picture and jump forward we've got another beautiful picture. Let me go ahead and close that and then let me now play the uh, the 720p version and we'll start that from the beginning and you can see it's still got uh, pretty decent video quality and if we come up here, yeah, it's playing It's playing the original 4 meg 720. But I could further slow that down if I needed to. Uh, I could even play it at 480p if I, if I had to. So that's, that's the major benefit of optimizing your videos uh, with Plex and letting it do it instead of handbrake. And you see uh, it's, it's quicker than handbrake and it's, it's more, you know, you set it and forget it and move on with your life and do other things. You don't have to sit there babysitting handbrake and having handbrake eat up resources on your primary uh, computer if you have a server to run it on let my server do that's why I have those eight core processor in there let it do the work uh, and uh, and and optimize the Plex video for me rather than deal with handbrake another neat feature now of Plex it's in beta right now but it's called the Plex DVR which allows you to uh, record TV over an over-the-air antenna using an HD Home Run Connect. So I got an HD Home Run Connect, so let's go and unbox it and uh, set it up in my media closet, and then we'll come back and I'll show you some of the features of the Plex DVR. All right, so let's get this uh, HD Home Run unboxed and uh, get it hooked up. Here is the old unit, HD Home Run. It's the old one I had. Alright, so we open up the box. Oh, it's a tiny little thing. Pull that out. It's a teeny tiny little thing. It should just pop right up, and it does. So there it is. That's a unit. Oh, well, there it is. Get over here. Got a quick start guide. We have a uh, comes with its own network cable, and then of course the never present. 
power adapter. Pretty standard, huh? And that is a uh, 5 volt, 1 amp power adapter. Alright, so let's go hook it up. I hope you enjoyed that unboxing and setup video and me and my scanty, slutty little tank top. Sorry about the way I was dressed, but it was a hot day. What can I say? Uh, and you probably also noticed, I, one thing I noticed when I was hooking it up is that damn equipment room needs to be cleaned up. Uh, it's been torn up due to the construction on the house. And I need to get in there because I am out of power plugs and the wiring is a mess. And I'm afraid to turn around in the room because I'm going to knock something over. So look for an upcoming video on on cleaning up my server closet let's let's go back to plex and talk about the plex dvr uh, functionality uh, so let me show you the uh, the recording schedule. well let me go to let me go to settings first and let me come down here to the dvr so here you can see i now have the hd home run connected it's it's got an ip address uh, it, it's gone through and it's selected the channels I can manage channels from here. I can even manage device settings. And you can see right now one of the tuners is recording Quincy ME House of No Return. So that's under my server DVR beta. Uh, so that's how hard it was to set up. I just need to load some software on the PC. I'm not going to go through that and show you because uh, every machine is going to be different. But let, let's go back to the home menu in Plex. So let's talk about the way Plex handles things and um, a mistake sorry about that my microphone fell and about a mistake I made I I got excited about the fact that Plex had a DVR functionality 
what I didn't do was my homework. And uh, I come to find out, I thought you could watch live TV and you would have a program grid just like you did with Windows Media Center or DirecTV or TiVo or whatever. However, I came to find that the guide function is a patented and copyrighted uh, piece of software that you have to actually lease uh, or license from uh, the people that created it. And I guess Plex, for whatever reason, decided they didn't need a regular program guide and a live TV guide. Uh, they just wanted to get the DVR functionality working. And so this is what they came up with. So you need to be aware of that. The Plex DVR will not replace live TV and does not give you a program grid. What it does is it gives you a discovery grid, as you can see here. For example, this tells you what's starting soon. This tells you what's on right now. New episodes premiering. Upcoming shows that you're going to be recording. Uh, upcoming movies that are coming on, sports, etc. I find the view that I like to use most is under Discover I Go to Shows. And that just gives you an alphabetized listing of all the TV shows coming on. Uh, so, for example, let's, uh, let's go to the Addams Family and we'll click on that. So I can come here and I can select the individual. Let me get my face off the uh, screen here so we have more real estate. There we go. Uh, so I can come here and I can select the individual episodes. Sorry, I'm on the wrong screen. And I can tell it to simply record that episode. So record this episode and add it to the library TV shows. I could add this to any library I wanted to. So if I wanted to, if I wanted to add that to... Uh, I can't actually add that to any library. I have to add it to a library that is set up when we created our libraries for TV shows. So I'm just going to cancel on there. The other thing I can do is come up here and click record and this will record all episodes. I can then further tell it new airings or new and repeat airings and you can't see that there for whatever reason OBS is not seeing it but it does give you an option to do new and repeat airings and I just selected that there. But I'm just going to cancel on this because I don't want to actually record that. Then you can, so that's one way to uh, find your shows that are coming on, and that's the methodology I prefer because it just simply alphabetizes everything. Now, this guide or this, yeah, this program guide is based on the number of channels you receive on your HD Home Run Connect. So once you have that set up and it goes out and scans the channels and verifies that they actually exist then it populates your guide based on that information. And it does an okay uh, job of doing that. Uh, now, if I go to recording schedule, you, it'll, it'll show you in blue what was recorded yesterday, what was recorded today, what is being recorded, and then what is upcoming in the future to record. Uh, and you can jump forward, uh, I think, two weeks. It'll show you uh, what you're going to be recording. Uh, you can also change your view here from calendar to agenda view which just gives you a, 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 a vertical list. I prefer the calendar view. I just like it better. Okay, And we'll come back here to home. So what Plex does is it stores all those TVs under this folder I created called TV Shows. Uh, so here is where all my TV shows will appear once they have recorded. Now, I don't have a, uh, a show available right now because, as you can see, it is still recording Quincy ME. And uh, in, my, in my lust to get this up and running, I deleted the shows that had recorded that I had already watched and tested without thinking of leaving one for this uh, video for demonstration purposes. But Quincy will be done in a few minutes and we'll come back and I can show you uh, how that looks when you go to play the video. All right, so Quincy has finished recording. Now typically uh, Plex puts it, puts it up here in the... Uh, recently added TV uh, section. Oh, it's it's down here now. All right, well, that's another thing about Plex. I don't understand. It moves this interface around occasionally. So uh, if I click on Quincy ME, it'll take me to... If I had multiple versions, I would see the Quincy ME here, and I'd see the multiple versions down underneath. Um, so if I come over here to Info... It should tell me uh, the it's 480p and it tells me the file size. So it's almost one gigabyte for a one hour standard definition video. Um, so let's go out and let's see if this will play. 
and uh, give you an idea of the of the quality of the video. And I'm probably going to have to kill the audio here. Yeah, so it doesn't. Uh... So there's Quincy ME uh, on my Cozy TV channel, and you can see it's a standard definition video. I don't want to play this too long because I don't want to get a copyright infringement against me. But uh, you can see I can fast forward through the video. Now this is on a web browser interface. On the Roku it's a little bit slower and the Xbox it's a little bit slower but you can see that it does an okay job of recording a standard deaf TV and it puts it into your Plex interface just like it would a movie or any other TV show out there and allows you to stream it. So uh, that being said that is basically how the DVR function in Plex works. But keep in mind that in Plex you have no live TV and you have no true program guide like you would with your cable box or your uh, Windows Media Center or your TiVo DVRs. Uh, for whatever reason, I think it's probably a licensing issue. Plex doesn't want to be burdened with having to license that technology. And if you look on the Plex FAQ, they're vague as to when if ever that they will offer that functionality under Plex so in my zest to get Plex DVR up and running like I said I overlooked that that one key feature that I need for mom and uh, so make sure you read the FAQ before you buy like I did it's no big deal I can I can use that that other uh, HD home run connect I bought uh, I can have other uses for it and not only will Plex uh, take care of your videos, uh, that kind of thing, it'll also uh, take care of your, your music. So in Plex, I also have all my, my music library ripped. Uh, and your view, you can view it by albums, you can view it by artists, you can view it by tracks. And uh, if you have multiple copies of an album, like, uh, for example, let me go back to music, uh, like Abba Gold is a multi multi-disc collection uh, etc so it, it gets the album art for you etc uh, let's go to Ann Murray uh, where are the op there should be extras that's weird because I with the Plex Plash with the Plex Plath with the Plex Pass you have uh, on the Roku I have some additional when I go to a music uh, it'll it'll go out and it'll find music videos that, that correspond to that that CD that I own uh, so that's a really neat feature and then I've got some uh, the other thing I've done is I download a lot of YouTube tutorial videos and I wanted to have those at my beck and call so uh, under here under Premiere Pro these are these are a bunch of how-to tutorials that I downloaded from YouTube uh, in order to figure out how to use uh, Premiere Pro and sometimes I want to want to watch them when I'm sitting in the living room or or in my easy chair with my laptop and learning how to do things. So that's another benefit of uh, of the uh, Plex Media Center. Uh, so all in all, I, I really uh, I think the Plex Media Center is the way to go if you have a lot of uh, video and audio like I do and 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 family photos and that kind of thing. Um, it just it just pretty much takes care of it for you where you don't have to worry about it. And uh, it works well uh, as long as you have a powerful enough processor to handle the transcoding. Now, uh, I want to talk about the goal that I had and why I got so excited about the Plex DVR. The goal I have is to make one interface to rule them all. In other words, I wanted Plex to be able to, my hope was Plex would be able to hand my, handle my live TV, give me a program guide, let me record videos, let me access uh, uh, my stuff, everything through Plex, with the exception of Netflix and Hulu and the like. Uh, and mainly because of mom, you know, mom is 78 years old and uh, she's used to doing TV one way and, and I don't, I could show her, but five minutes later she'll probably forget what I showed her. So I want to keep it as simple as I can for her. So uh, I I still have a Windows Media Center uh, running on Windows 7. I have one in a virtual machine on my Dell server. And then the other night uh, on this beige box behind me right here, 
I went ahead and did a, uh, a, a bare metal install of Windows 7 in Windows Media Center. And I have that other HD home run device that is not compatible with Plex. It's about five years old. And it is compatible with Windows Media Center. And uh, oddly enough, so is the new HD home run connect that I got. So <clears throat> I could go back to simply using Windows Media Center uh, to uh, serve my uh, live TV needs. That would be great for mom because I could, I could just put an Xbox 360 in her room and have it boot up directly to the Windows Media Center because it's an extender. And then she would have her local channels and live TV and a guide that she's used to uh, and a familiar interface. Uh, and then I could use it on uh, the other Xbox in the living room as well. Uh, but, uh, you know, Windows Media Center has ended support. The guide data on it now is really quirky and it's going to end eventually. Uh, and when it does, we'll have to find alternatives to guide data. And I'm just trying to find a simple solution to serve all my media needs. And I think I may have found it. So let me tell you what I came across uh, here this last week uh, in speaking with some people who are a little more knowledgeable about this than me. Uh, this is the TiVo Bolt. This device right now is $240 on Amazon. Now, if you're familiar with the TiVo, I've used the TiVo 18 years ago when I first moved out to this house and we had Direct TV. Uh, we, uh, we had a TiVo that would work with Direct TV and I loved the TiVo. Uh, the big bitch that everybody has about a TiVo is you pay $15 a month for guide data, but who cares? I don't care. If, if, if the device does what I want it to do without having to have a bunch of crap laying around the house and a bunch of band-aided together solutions, then I'm all for it. Let me show you some of the features of the TiVo Bolt. Now, the TiVo Bolt is, like I said, it's about 240 bucks on Amazon. And let me get my face off the screen and just go to Chrome. Uh, the TiVo Bolt, Bolt will work with cable or over-the-air TV like I have. But look what else it supports. HBO Go, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, YouTube, Vudu. And also now, and I have verified this, Plex. So with the TiVo Bolt, I could, I could buy one of these. Not only can you do season passes, but you can do season, you use a feature called One Pass, and it'll go out and it'll look on Netflix, Hulu, cable, wherever you have videos at, and it'll tell you, uh, it'll, it'll go out and automatically set that up to record those uh, or and tell you where they're located and create a custom watch list for you. Um, the, uh, I'd be looking at the, uh, at the white one here, but let me come down here. So here's the TiVo little peanut remote control. And here's, uh, let's see, uh, TiVo Bolt also supports antenna right there. It's got an RF remote, so that's good. So the TiVo Bolt has unified television, unified search and watch list, commercial skip mode, and quick mode for recorded TV. So, and you have the multi-room experience. So I buy one of these TiVo Bolts, just like I do with now with my direct TV receiver, put that in my equipment closet, and then I buy these little TiVo minis for the rooms where I want live TV and where I want Hulu and Netflix, etc. Because this device will do it all. Um, and, uh, I just think that this might be a better idea. Um, it has four tuners, has a one terabyte hard drive in it. Uh, here's the back of the unit. So you've got your cable, you've got a cable card slot. So if you're a cable user, remote finder, uh, coax digital cable or ATSC over the air tuner. It has optical digital out audio left and right, uh, HDMI two has an Ethernet port, uh, has two USB ports, and it even has an eSATA port. So if you want to add more additional storage to it for your recorded TV later. Uh, so this looks like this would be the one device to rule them all. Now what I don't know is that it will support Netflix and Hulu and Plex on the, uh, on the mini, on the extender. So I have to find out about that. And these things are $149 a piece. Uh, and we're talking we would need uh, at least two of those. I would need one for my mother's room and one for the living room. 
And uh, so that's $300 in TiVo minis plus 240 for the TiVo itself. So that's, you know, that's a little over $550 or $540 for TV. But it would allow me to get rid of direct TV and have live TV and a program guide for my mother and for my spouse uh, because we could we can easily adapt to just having over-the-air TV and then uh, buying uh, either watching other shows we watch on Netflix or Hulu or even uh, maybe a combination of something like Sling TV for for AMC and those kind of channels so uh, the TiVo bolt looks really interesting I want to get my hands on one and get it in here but I've got to get my iPad Air resold on eBay before I can afford that. So in case you all want to throw some money in my uh, donations box and see me get one of those and try it out here. Or TiVo, if you're listening, I would love to eval one of these units and do a review for you. So either way, I'll be picking picking one of those up so that we can try it. Uh, and it looks like that may solve my entire problem uh, of live TV. So... There you have the video. I hope you found it uh, educational and informative. And uh, if you like us, please give us a thumbs up down below and subscribe to our videos so that you can see uh, future videos. Hope I kept this short, sweet, and to the point. It gives you a better idea of what I use to run my home office and how I serve uh, my audio and video needs out to my out to everybody in the house. So have a good have a good day. We'll see you on the other side. Bye bye.